Hello and welcome to the first part of Appendix B uh, of the tutorial on writing your own operating system. Now, in this tutorial, we will talk about um, a partition table um, because, yeah, you have access to the hard drive, but um, you can just uh, read it in a very raw way. You can only get raw data. And uh, in practice, you will want to put a, a file system between your, between what you are doing and uh, the hard drive, so that you don't have to deal with questions like uh, which sector has this uh, data, which sector has this data. So um, yeah, and uh, before we can uh, write a file system, we first. Uh, have to look at the partition tables. Um, yeah, because you can have just multiple partitions on the file, uh, on a hard drive, and um, that is uh, important for the file system, so we need to do this first. Um, yeah, and we will be using uh, the MS DOS partition table system because this is. Uh, uh, as far as I know, this is really the standard nowadays, even on Linux systems, because uh, yeah, it's a it's the way Windows does it. And if you used anything else than that, you wouldn't be compatible to Windows. And uh, yeah, then you could not dual boot with Windows. And I don't know. I don't think it would be a good idea to use a different uh, partition table system. Um, yeah, but uh, the MS DOS partition tables are really simple. Um, I don't think we will need a lot of time for this. Uh, so, I mean, you are, you are already able to read raw sectors from the hard drive, right? And yeah, the master boot record is just the sector number zero. Okay, so. Um, when we wrote the, uh, uh, the system to read and write, then we wrote uh, HTTP colon slash slash and so on uh, into this, but uh, this isn't a valid master boot record. So a master boot record looks like this. It has 440 bytes for uh, the boot a bootloader, what I call the pre-bootloader. Uh, some people call it the bootstrap. And uh, yeah, when when you boot, this is just sector zero is just read from the hard drive, and uh, then uh, the BIOS just jumps into that. So there needs to be some uh, bytecode in there. But yeah, 440 bytes is really not enough. So uh, that is why you would uh, then, why this code would then proceed reading the uh, partition table and uh, selecting the boot partition and uh, loading the real bootloader from there. Okay, so after these um, 440 bytes, you have four more bytes. Uh, which are, um, it's called a signature. Uh, I, we are not going to use that really. Then we have uh, two bytes uh, which are unused. Then we have four partition table entries. And each of them is uh, 16 bytes long. And then in the end, we have uh, two magic bytes. Uh, which way around was it? Was it 55AA or AA55? It doesn't matter. Um, uh, it's 55AA. OK, uh, this is how the master boot record looks. And yeah, the 
So we are not really interested in this. We will just leave this the way it is. These we will leave the way they are. We will leave this the way it is. We will just check that this is correct. Uh, and these are really the things that we are interested in. And how do they look? Well, first you have one byte which tells you whether the device is bootable or not. And yeah, you, of course you can have uh, multiple installations of uh, Linux, you can dual boot with Windows and whatnot. Um, but uh, only one of the devices is allowed to be bootable, and that is the designated uh, boot drive. And uh, yeah, the bootloader in there is then supposed to have its own ways of, de of finding out uh, what's with the other partitions and other drives. So, um, so we we will only have one, if any. Um, partition with uh, this set to 0x80. 0x80 means it's bootable and 0x00 means it's not bootable. Okay, then you have three more bytes which are the um, the cylinder head and sector of uh, the start of the partition. But as I've told you, yeah, this isn't really what is uh, used anymore today. So uh, FDisk sets these values correctly, but uh, we are not going to use them. So this, this is a CHS address of the start of the partition. Then we have one byte. So these are three, this is one. One byte um, with an ID. Um, I think this, is an I this ID tells you which uh, operating system has been used to format the hard drive. So uh, I think we will be seeing 0x83, I think, which stands for Linux. Then we'll have three more bytes, which are the uh, CHS address of the end of the partition. And then after that, we have the data that we are really interested in, two 32-bit um, integers, which give us the LBA address of the start of the partition and the LBA address, uh, not in the LBA address, a length. of the partition. Okay. So yeah, that's not that's not too complicated, I think. Um, yeah, let's just program this. I think this will be quite easy. Um, but I will go into um, I will go into one thing. Um, So um, I have downloaded a live disk uh, of Tiny Core Linux, and before we proceed, I just want to. Um, oops, wait, that's wrong. Uh, I just want to uh, prepare the hard drive that we've created in VirtualBox. So I'm going to the drives here. And select tiny core as boot medium. 
And by the way, we should uh, really stop writing to the hard drive because this would break the partition table again. Okay, in tiny core. First, I will start F disk. So, I will create a partition table. Then I create a partition, primary partition. We will not go into extended partitions, by the way. So I'm just going to create two primary partitions. Number one, which is going to be the first entry there. Starting at the first usable sector. Now I have it go to sector number 130. And then I will make another partition, primary number 2. 131 is the first, and 261 is the last cylinder. Okay. Now I've write the... Yeah, now I have uh, written this partition table to the disk. Um, and yeah, while we are at it, uh, I will also create um, two uh, file systems. Uh, but Tiny Core doesn't have um, yeah doesn't have the the appropriate um, programs to to create. Uh, FAT uh, file systems, so so I'm going to install the package dosfs tools. Okay. Now I'm going to make two um, entries. So now we have make file system vfat dash f32 because we want to use fat32. on the first partition and the second partition. Okay. So now I'm going to mount these partitions. and just create two files.
Okay, so now I'm going to reboot. So what we have now is we have a hard drive which contains a valid partition table and um, yeah, the, there are two FAT file systems now uh, which both have uh, two files in them which we will be uh, looking at in the next part of the Appendix B. So. Yeah, so as I've said, um, the partition table entry is the one on the down, is the lower one of these diagrams. So what do we have in there? So we have the bootable flag. Now the head, sector and cylinder of the start of the partition. Uh, 
Um, the start sector only is 6 bits and uh, the cylinder is 10 bits, so I'm going to do it this way. Then the partition ID. And down here is the interesting part. The logical block address of the start and the length. Okay. And then we'll have a structure for the master boot record. So 440 bytes for the bootloader, then thirty-two bit signature. which we are going to ignore. <laughs> Two unused bytes. Then four partition table entries. and the metric number in the end. Okay, so this is already all we have to do in the in the header file. Now in the make file. So actually, uh, yeah, yeah, I will do that. Um, so so the primary slave. This one is uh, the bus where our hard drive is. OK. 
Okay, so um, so this is supposed to show us the partitions. that we've just created. So in here. I will instantiate this master boot record structure here. And then read from the hard drive into that. Sector number zero. to the master boot record. Okay, so this should load the master boot record. So this should print the file system entries. Damn it, I'm afraid I just overwrote the partition table. <laughs> because I didn't compile before running that. Okay, so here we have the master boot record. So I found the mistake. It was uh, actually easier than I thought. Uh, I hadn't set this attribute packed here in the partition table entry and master boot record. And uh, yeah, if you don't do that, then the compiler might just decide to uh, to move these objects around a bit in the RAM and then increasing the 
size of the partition table entries and master boot record. And this attribute packed actually tells the compiler not to do that. So, uh, yeah, because of that, uh, the size of master boot record was just wrong. Uh, probably was just too large and then, uh, uh, I guess it didn't read anything. Yeah, whatever. So, um, so if we compile this now, um, You can now see here, uh, what do we have? Uh, this is not bootable, the first partition. It starts at, uh, at, uh, cycle head sector 010100. It's, um, yeah, as I've said, ID 83 for Linux. Then, uh, Cylinder head and sector of uh, the end of the file, uh, the end of the uh, partition, and then here one, two, three, four bytes for the for the sector number of uh, the start of the partition. And you might be wondering why is this three F here? Um, yeah, this is uh, just uh, there are just a few sectors reserved in front, and. Uh, I actually don't exactly know why, but uh, that's the way it is. So uh, uh, 63 sectors in front of the partition, uh, of the first partition, are just free. Yeah, and uh, this is the length of the partition, and here's the next partition. It's... Um, So this is the boot flag. It's not bootable. Uh, cylinder head and sector of the uh, start of the second partition, 83 again for Linux. Then one, two, three uh, bytes for the end of the partition. And then one, two, three, four bytes for uh, the start of the partition in uh, LBA addresses and the length of the partition also in LBA addresses. And here in the end, so two entries are just all zeros, so invalid entries, uh, because we only have two partitions created. And then here in the end, we have this 55AA, the magic number. Okay? So. So now we have the master boot record. So now we can look at that. Here in the end, I will iterate through these um, partition tables.
So what do we have now? Yeah, okay. Um, first partition is not bootable, type 83. Partition 1 is not bootable, type 83. Partition, yeah, 3. Uh, type 0, I think type 0 should mean, uh, should probably say uh, that there is no partition. And yeah, the really interesting uh, part here now is um, in these partition table entries is start LBA. This is going to be the offset uh, which we have to add um, on the uh, to inside the um, the file system, you know, the FAT file system will always add this value to uh, the offsets that it's reading, and uh, yeah. So, but um, yeah, this this is all I wanted to show you uh, in this video. So uh, now you can read the master boot record. Uh, you get the partition table out and. The important part is you get this offset, which uh, you really, really need for reading from the partitions. Um, and that is what we are going to do next time. And then we will take this value and um, and then uh, iterate through the uh, through the file system that we've created uh, with Tiny Core Linux now. Okay, so yeah, that's all for today. As I've said, tune in next time when we uh, examine this uh, FAT file system. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss that next video. Hit like if you liked this video. Uh, yeah, actually, I didn't like it that much because it's it was quite primitive what we did, and uh, I think uh, next time will be much more interesting when we really start. Uh, seeing directories and files and file contents and stuff. So, yeah. Whatever. If you liked it, uh, you can hit like, but uh, I understand if you don't. <laughs> so, see you next time. Bye.